Hi, Steve. Hi, Lindy. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great, so great to have you here. So we had the, uh, we were able to meet each other at Polyglot Conference in Japan earlier this year. Correct. And I do believe there are many people who know you and watch your videos online. But for those of my viewers who don't, would you please introduce yourself? Okay, well, my name is Steve Kaufman. I live in Vancouver, Canada. I'm uh, basically retired from the wood business where I worked for over 40 years. But I have a great interest in languages, languages that I learned. Uh, I was a diplomat for seven years. I studied in France. I learned Chinese as a diplomat. And in the last 10, 12 years or more, I've become particularly interested in learning languages. You know, I'm 74 now. I've learned, I don't know, 10 languages. Uh, so some people say you can't, you can't learn languages past the age of eight or something. So that's not true. And uh, I'm also with my son, uh, we have created a website called link, L-I-N-G-Q.com, which is kind of how I like to learn. And I have my YouTube channel, Lingo Steve. Great. Thank you. I'll put all those links below. Okay. So Steve, I'm going to dive into the very pressing questions that I have for you already. Okay. The first one, something that I receive a lot is, how do you manage to learn so many languages at the same time? Uh, the question is more of how do you balance your time? Usually, like I typically have not learned languages at the same time. I tend to focus on one language at a time. That has always been my pattern. So, uh, you know, I spend, uh, and you know, it's, it's become faster, but I would spend like two years on Russian. Yeah, maybe the first year I didn't even speak, just lots of listening and reading. Czech was mm -hmm. like six months. Then I had to go to Romania. So I spent two months on learning with Romania. And then... My wife and I were heading off to Greece, so I spent actually six months on Greek. But then it's only recently that I said, so then I started Arabic, and here in Vancouver, there's not so many Arabic speakers, but there's lots of uh, Iranians. Oh, okay. So I've learned the writing system. Why don't I learn, you know, Farsi, Persian? Yes. So that made it two. And then my wife was watching Turkish, you know, soap operas on Netflix. And I said, that's kind of neat. I'll try and learn Turkish. So briefly, I had a period where I was trying to learn three languages at the same time. Yeah. And my initial approach was to go three months, three months, three months. And then at the end of the three months, I'd fallen so far behind in the first one that I said, that's no good. I'll try and learn them together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I said, I'm going to make sure that, because it's difficult to control. Like it's not, I don't spend my day language learning. Like there's lots of stuff happening, yeah. you know, yeah. just stuff that I do. And so I said, I'm going to force myself to create what we call links. I got to save a hundred new words every mm -hmm. day in each one of the three languages. And mm -hmm. I was able to maintain that for about a, maybe a month or so. And then I started not doing it. Like I was staying up at 11 o'clock at night to make sure I got my hundred, you know, new yeah. stuff. It was like, what am I, I don't want this obligation. I want to do what I like yeah. doing. What I like doing is I like listening to stuff. So, and then I said, I'm going to drop Turkish because the, the Persian and the, the Arabic reinforce each other because they're both in the Arabic script. So yes. every time I'm in there, I'm improving my ability to read. And, right. and you know, it takes a long time to get good at reading in another language. Like that's, yeah. you may learn the Cyrillic alphabet, you may learn Hangul, and it's not that difficult, but to get good at it, you actually mm. have to read a lot. Mm. That's at least... I do. Maybe you're able to do, you know, to progress more quickly. So I decided that now, so now I have no particular routine. Uh, I have certain podcasts in Persian and Arabic. I'll go and grab the latest podcast, listen to it, don't understand 20, 30%. Come home that night and I'll try and read through it on link and see if I can figure out what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. and that's about it. No, no system. But then the question would be, how do you maintain the languages that you started learning years ago? So maybe Russian or Romanian. How do you yeah, keep Well, first of all, Russian is in that first dozen languages that I can turn on. Like, I, I, I have no problem with Russian. Mm -hmm. so, but Romanian and Greek, they're in that other group, which is, I can't turn them on. And, but uh, it, because my, my learning has been based on a lot of listening, particularly heavy to our mini stories. So if I spend a few hours on many stories in Greek, it'll, I, have no, I have no fear that it'll be gone. You know, mm. I'll, I'll remember when I was listening to that. Uh, yeah. The words come back. So, yes. so and, and, and uh, you know, obviously when I go to speak, I'll stumble, but that's always the case at first. But, mm. but I can ramp up my ability by doing a lot of listening and reading, and then I can go and, and start talking to someone and really struggle for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then it just starts to come out. So I never worry about that. I never worry about that. There's no way. I don't think 
you can maintain at a you know instant you know deliverable high quality blah 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 20 languages uh, maybe that person exists i can't do it me neither no something that i'm realizing these days is how how fluid these languages really are in terms of how they fluctuate so i'm studying for a korean exam coming up and i'm focusing all my efforts on korean right now mm -hmm. and when i switch over to japanese i find that my current japanese accent sounds very korean Right. And it's super frustrating because I can hear myself and I don't know how to fix it. But then, you know, a few months later or a few months ago when I'm really focusing on Japanese, my Japanese accent is great. And then when I speak Korean, Korean people are like, oh, you sound like a Japanese person speaking Korean. You don't sound like an American speaking Korean. It's weird. And it's not really something that I can control after so ever many years of learning these languages. It's just they're very fluid. But, but that, that's true with that, everything but our, our native language. So if you were to go to Jeju Island or something, or if you were to go to uh, you know, Osaka, you're Japanese. If I go to Osaka, I start sounding more like someone from Osaka. Yeah. It's, uh, because in, our, in the languages that we learn, I think we are very easily influenced by the environment. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Whereas our native language, it kind of stays. Yeah. But even there, we might be influenced. Another question I get often is, um, some people feel that polyglots are like some kind of secret society and you have to be able to speak a number of languages to be able to call yourself a polyglot. What do you think about the term polyglot and the community and exclusivity? See, I don't like the word polyglot. Mm -hmm. uh, most English speakers don't know what the word means. They've it's true. It. Never I know it. you prefer the term linguist. Linguist, because that is in fact the English term. Term. It's mm -hmm. not the Spanish term, it's not the French term, it's mm -hmm. not the Russian, German, but it is the English term. If you yeah. look it up in a dictionary, most people don't know what linguistics is. Yeah. Never heard of linguistics. They don't know what it's, what, what, that such a thing exists. Have never heard the term polyglot. Linguist means someone who's good at languages. Good at languages. So mm -hmm. even, to my mind, I would much prefer we call ourselves language lovers. So if, if yeah. I'm, and I'm sure you're the same way. If you meet someone who speaks one other language, but speaks it very well, I'm full of admiration. Yes. One, one language. Person yeah. speaks Japanese only. Say French and Japanese. I'm full yeah. of admiration, full of admiration. And yes. I think that's the way people are in the polyglot community. People yeah. are not competing with each other. They don't no. look down their nose at someone who only speaks two languages. Absolutely. It's just learning languages is fun. Projecting yeah. yourself, what I've, what, why I'm full of admiration is because here's this person who is, let's say, French and actually is behaving like a Japanese. Mm. Wow. You know, that is very interesting to me. That's, and if you can do it in three languages, so much the better. So you're projecting yourself into this other persona. You're mm. imitating your culture to some extent. Yeah. It's fun. And I think that's what our group is all about. Yeah. And, and it's not, uh, we're not competing, you know, who has the most languages or who speaks which language. Absolutely. So. That's right. Happy to hear that coming from you. I'm sure that will give a lot of inspiration to people. And, and we should encourage more. I feel that we want to be a little mm -hmm. careful that we don't get too, you know, we're all talking about learning, uh, I don't know, some, uh, you know, esoteric language. It's, it's all about, we, most people struggle to learn languages. They all struggle, but you, you get there. But there are people yeah. who go to Spanish class for 10 years and can't speak Spanish. Mm. There are people who go through school and can't speak when they graduate, you know. Mm. Do you so, think it's yeah. technique or it's mindset? Uh, I think it's, well, you know, I think mindset is huge. Mindset is huge. Uh, you have to, so the person who goes to, and I know people like this, you know, they go to their Spanish class at the library. They've been doing it for 10 years. And, uh, I think it's tech, to some extent it's technique. They don't listen enough, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, they, at some level, don't ever think they're going to become fluent. Whereas mm -hmm. both you and I, it, it might be a struggle, but if I'm going to learn that language, if I put enough time into it, I will become fluent. Mm -hmm. And I won't stop. If I, I'm determined to get enough vocabulary, yes. then, then I'll get there. And I'll get to where I can listen to things of interest to me and all of that. I know, and I know that if I continue using the language, and to me, using the language includes listening and reading. I don't Absolutely. have to be speaking to be Absolutely. using the language. The yeah. brain is converting this to meaning. That's using the language. And if I mm -hmm. do enough of it, I'll get there. And mm -hmm. every time I'm doing it, I'm getting better. So that's all positive. If I sat in a classroom and I had a teacher explaining stuff to me, 
and giving me drills that I'm going to get mm -hmm. three of them wrong and it's frustrating, I think mm -hmm. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get anywhere either. So yeah. I think that it's partly learning technique. It's partly, obviously, the person who goes to the library all the time doesn't have the, the, the sort of self-confidence or doesn't have that initiative mm -hmm. to take charge of their own language learning. Yeah. So all of those things and time, it takes time. That's why, again, listening is so great because you can do it anytime, anywhere. But it's, it's, it's got to make sense. It's got to be stuff of interest. It can't be, you know, repetition is okay for a while, but repetition, we're, we can tolerate the repetition during the honeymoon period, as you, yeah. call, which is a great yes. term. I like that term. <laughs> Once you pass the honeymoon period, you got to get something interesting to dig into. Yes. You can't be repeating silly phrases all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then lastly, I have a lot of Japanese viewers. Would you be comfortable in having a little chat in Japanese? Of course. I'd even like to do it in Korean just to show you how bad my Korean is. Oh, then,韓国語を書いたよ。韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓国語、韓
めっちゃ難しいと思います。なんか話が出ないんですね、うん、中国語で。まあ、中国語はね、それ僕、たくさん聞きました、中国語。た例えば、シャンシャン。シャンシャン、これはあのコミックのね。そして、もう、CD。もう、僕の後ろはもうたくさん CD あるんですよ。中国語。中国語、たくさん CD あるんですよ。たくさん。えー、単語家にいいとか、何でもたくさんある。だたくさん聞かないとなんです。そしてまあ、で、あの、中国の友達もいるんですよ、バンクーブでね。だから、中国に住んだことないんですよ。で中国人がね、えー、あ、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人がね、中国人今に中国語で答えましょうかいや日本語で。中国語です。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。中文。就是要多看多多阅读，多多听多阅读就可以了。对，对。But、uh, no, you, 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 you have to get together with eventually at some point. As you know, just we'll get back to English. It's, it's input, I believe in input, but at some point you have to speak a lot. You have to、yeah. speak a lot. If you want to speak well, you have to speak a lot. And I don't believe it matters when you start. People have、yeah. to wish you're surrounded by the language as I was in Japan. I started speaking very early. It was Russian. I had no one to speak to. I don't speak early. But whenever, at, at some point, you got to speak a lot.、Mm. And, and, when, and that's why I think if you have a lot of vocabulary and good comprehension, you can get into some meaty conversations. That's、yeah. what you need. So、yeah. to, to be struggling and, and spend an hour on, on italki with someone and you got a vocabulary of 200 words, you'd be better off spending that time trying to increase your familiarity with the language,、mm. your vocabulary. Mm. Otherwise, you're just chasing these 200 words around. I, I don't think、right. that's useful. Yeah, but that being said, for people who are shy or have low self confidence, just being able to use those 200 words in a bit of conversation does help boost you and motivate I'm、sure、you. It does. I'm sure it does. But I, I find that、uh, you know, when I have started early, like in Korean, I started、yeah. early because I thought、oh, Korean will be easy because I speak Chinese, I speak Japanese,、yeah. uh, Korean, you know. And I would sit there and I'm sweating because it's so hard. I don't understand what she's saying. And、mm. I can't really put the words together. And I find that is, is a, an obstacle. Now I don't mind actually speaking Korean. I, I don't speak, but I, I can, I, I have a limited vocabulary. I'm okay.、Mm. I understand what people are saying. So I'm comfortable speaking now. And so if、yeah. I were to have more opportunity to speak, then I could improve.、Mm. According to Link statistics, I have 40,000 words in Korean. Crazy. Wow. Yeah, So, I have done a lot of reading and listening to Korean, but I never use it. So,、yeah. really, I should start using my Korean. Yeah, I hear you. Well, Steve, thank you so much for sharing your insights and tips. It was great to talk、okay. to you. Great to talk to you. Hope、and、to see you at the next Polyglot Conference. Exactly. Are you going to Mexico? I hope so, if I can afford a ticket. It's very far from Singapore. It is indeed.、Yeah. Okay, thank you.、Bye. Thank you, Steve. Bye.